But for long term, why long term love is so hard to come by? Why long term love is so hard to come by? Go ahead and play this clip. Clarence, 70 years, 70 years of, marriage, of marriage, had to lay his wife down. Yes. What have you learned witnessing him have to do that and they, any thoughts you may have had and being able to let? I got to say this. I'm now playing a video for the people that's in the chat and the people that's on the panel. So let's make sure we pay attention to it um, so we can discuss it. Sometimes I start staring at stuff too as well. So I get, let's go ahead and pay attention, folks. Your Uncle Clarence, 70 years, 70 years of, of marriage, marriage, had to lay his wife down. Yes. What have you learned witnessing him have to do that and they, any thoughts you may have had and being able to let go of that level of love to that degree? That's the perfect example of what I think love is. It made me realize that I only love when things were okay. Mm. There were situations where our love required forgiveness, patience. I was not willing to do that work. I don't I have that Uncle Clarence sort of love. I never lived with a woman. It taught me so much about myself. When you have a person that lives with you, it's a mirror. And I didn't really like some of the things that I was seeing. I always thought I wanted to be a husband until I realized what that entailed. Me, it showed me everything I needed to work on in my manhood. It showed me mm. what I was really asking for when I was right. praying for a wife. Uncle Clarence. I mean, the years, man, like y'all must have been through some shit. He was like, man, the only thing we didn't do was leave. Mm. Wow. Now I understand the assignment. The time I was in a relationship, it was fidelity, right? It was short term. So you really can't right. wait that. Right. It was just romance, infatuation. Once we realize that we're regular, we just go our separate right. way. You have to be around a woman who's not pleased with me. I'm supposed to argue right now and right. you're still supposed to sleep here tonight? Right. That's crazy. <laughs> it's not about who comes, it's about who never leaves. All right. Why long-term love is so hard to come by. Why long-term love is so hard to come by. We'll go ahead and start with you first, Bruce. What are your thoughts about it, sir? I, I fundamentally think that it's uh, people are tend people tend to get in relationships and date while they're at their breaking point. And a breaking point is a place where you get to where you really have a low tolerance. So this it becomes really difficult for you to to overcome challenging situations or interactions or issues whenever you and your partner have disagreements. And um the, the, the key is to try to, before you get into a relationship or make it official, or even when you're vetting, is to try to get back to a place where you can have grace and give the person you're dealing with, dealing with uh, what they call a benefit of the doubt. Give them grace. You know, you got to free up the ability to have more tolerance because a lot of people have traumatic experiences and then in previous relationships and they tend to bleed on future relationships and it makes them be so quickly to, uh, with it acting off impulse because they're starting to re recognize and see, oh, this is a pattern. This is a behavior that I've once visited. And they're like, oh, I no, 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 I don't want to do that again. So they cut it short and relationships don't even last long. So some people continue on and, and it's an incompatibility issue at that point. So now you're just dragging a partner along and you're waiting on you to get your stability, part individual stability within that relationship, financially, uh, sometimes emotionally. Um, and then once you get that and you quit, it's over. You, or you find out, you find an exit, you find a reason to leave and you go and start dating again. And possibly uh, more than more often than not, the same thing can happen again until you actually Free up a way to give you get yourself back to where you can have full, either half tolerance or full tolerance, and that's what I teach a lot, a lot of females whenever I'm talking to them is to, to to recognize your red flags, understand your red flags and your de uh, your deal breakers, and try to try to weigh them. And you know, like, does this make sense? Talk to somebody who's in a relationship that you can trust, that's in a stable relationship, and that can look at it and be like, okay, these are valid deal breakers, or they might say, oh, sh man, we do that, we deal with this all the time. This is how we, this is how we cope with these things. This is how we get through it. You might not want to just cut your relationship off, or this guy might not be doing the same thing. It, it may appear that he's the same as this 
previous guy. But just give us some time, you know, talk it through, and you, you might you might be able to get through it. All right, go ahead, Bounce. What are your thoughts about it, man? I'm glad he was in that clip because I think a lot of people are always saying, oh, I want a wife, but they never say, oh, I want to be a husband. So I think he's being honest with himself. I didn't agree with actually living with someone until you're married or engaged. I don't believe in that. But I will say back to when I had my little six week course, they made us do credit checks, <laughs> um, STD checks, um, criminal background checks. And when I say it was intense, we had to go through very intense things. And at the end, you have to bring your parents. Both people bring your parents. You get their opinions on everything. So it was very intense. People don't do those steps. And I think a lot of things that happen that break down later in a marriage is because people skip these steps. I didn't know you had, you're a felon. I didn't know you, <laughs> you I didn't know you, whatever it is, it's, you had this STD, whatever it is, all of these things that could have been avoided in the beginning. I didn't know you were this bad with credit. It could have been avoided, but you just skipped these steps. So I think, again, it goes back to really getting to know a person and not marrying a stranger. People are marrying strangers, representatives. You don't even know who this person is. So um, a simple thing that I like to do personally is see if somebody could keep their word. It seems simple, but then you'll have all these examples of this person not keeping their word, and then you still go marry this person. Oh, I expected you to keep your word now in this marriage. All they showed you is how they couldn't do that. So I think people need to really be serious and learn how to be alone sometimes. Stop being desperate for a relationship. There's all this rhetoric on, what is this, YouTube? On YouTube of people saying you have to be in a relationship. If you're single after 30, something's wrong with you. Something's not wrong with you. You're, you're doing your due diligence. You're being smart and you're waiting until you meet somebody that can match you. You're just not going to accept anything. I'm just saying, I'm done. I got a question. You said a course or something? What was that you took? Yeah, it was a six week premarital course. For engaged couples. Can and I ask a question on that premarital course? Say it again. Oh, go ahead. I didn't mean it. I, I was gonna ask you about the same thing. No, I was what? what I was gonna ask you was I mean, on that premarital course, you stated that they uh there was a lot of questions and a lot of information that was critical to the relationship actually thriving that weren't asked or were overlooked. This is safe to say that. If you actually had, if you participate in uh, uh, intimacy early before you ask these questions, that can cloud your ability to want to pursue these these questions that may be a deal breaker because the, the intimacy that you experience may be like, OK, look, man, damn, that was good. I might ask this question and they might say, yeah, I'm, I'm a friggin I saw it at somebody and you like, man, but I don't want to lose it. You know what I'm saying? So it might be it might be important to. Ask these questions way before you get intimate. And I think people are just jumping in bed before they even uh, actually get to know each other. I agree with that. We had a lot of couples that were either never intimate or if they were intimate for that six weeks, they were supposed to not be intimate. So that makes a difference as well. But yeah, I agree. I did have another question too, as far as um, let's say when you go through this course, you find out, and I used to use the credit for an example, I won't go too extreme, but you find out that they had a low credit score. Is that something? Um, are those are those questions deal breakers or is that something that depending on what it is, you're willing to talk through it? So let's say there was a felon, but let's say they done something. It might have been. I don't know. They did something young and dumb, maybe like a robbery or something like that with the boys and they did something. But you're not seeing those. Are you willing to give them a chance or is it just that's it? All of it depends on what it is, you know what I mean? It really does. Because somebody can be a felon and change their life. I, I would be wrong to say that's impossible. But if they're a felon and they got bad credit and they got five kids by five different women and they got an STD, it's like, mm, maybe not. You know what I mean? So it's, it's a combination of everything and who this person is. Because you are all of the, the accumulation of all the decisions you have made throughout your life. We can't skip the history of a person. And if in total... You have a failing grade. You're not for me. It's, I mean, we have to look at everything in totality and people don't do that. They're like, oh, this person makes good money, so we should get married. Six figures is not enough to marry somebody. 